Good morning. I hope you can hear me okay. Uh, it looks like our audio is working, so I think we're good to go for another uh, service of morning prayer. Um, thank you all for joining us today. This is Thursday, believe it or not. Uh, it's, I don't know about you, but it reminds me of um, when you're on vacation and you forget what day it is. So um, I'm reminded by these daily offerings. Uh, that's the, that's the, ma the main way that I'm staying on track. So today is Thursday, and uh, we're so grateful that you're able to join us today. Um, today we have uh, morning prayers as usual, and then uh, we move into the weekend. We're almost at uh, Saturday and Sunday, so look forward to our uh, gatherings at 5 p.m. on Saturday and 10.15 on Sunday uh, for our family service. So again, uh, if you want to be part of these services, don't, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm more than happy to uh, get your face and your voice involved. We have some, uh, lots of volunteers who came forward la this past week, so grateful for that. And we continue to make, these, um, make this community uh, knit as best we can. So, so grateful you're here, and let us begin. Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us pray in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Amen. Today's psalm is Jubilate, Psalm 100, and we'll read responsively. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We now move into our meditation time, so we'll need our Lenten books, uh, Living Well Through Lent, and we're on page 48 today. 
will be led by an extended um, sermon and meditation by uh, Deacon Bill Zettinger. So we're grateful for his participation uh, in this. And um, as Bill meditates for us, um, we'll be moving on, we'll be moving into our time of prayer right after. So if you have anybody you wanna lift up in prayer today, just go ahead and type their names in um, in the Facebook comments. And even if you are watching this later in the day, um, feel free to still leave those names and we can read them uh, as the week goes on. So without further ado, here is our uh, prestigious deacon, Bill Zettinger, for our meditation. Good morning, everyone. Before I begin with this morning's meditation on Thursday, March 26th, I want to thank Canon Allison for giving me the opportunity to uh, reflect on a few of these, which I'll be doing over the next couple of weeks through Good Friday. I think this meditation this morning is really appropriate because the title is The Courage to Let Go of Darkness. And that is really true in our time here today. Uh, it's written by Scott Stoner. And he starts with a, a verse from Ephesus. And as you know, I can't uh, help but to do anything but teach a little. Uh, this letter was probably written to multiple churches, uh, not just the church in Ephesus. And it may not have been written by Paul. Uh, may, traditional scholarship said it was written while he was in prison, but it maybe it was written by Timothy uh, and there's great debate about that. But the theme, the theme is keeping the church pure and holy and eradicating fear and doubt and realizing that God loves you and how you apply these truths in a practical way. So it really kind of fits in with where we are today. And the verse that Scott begins with is from Ephesians 5. There's only six chapters, so it's easy. It's an easy read for you. For once you were in darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light. But the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Take no part in the unfruitful work of darkness. Boy, that rings true today, doesn't it? And the passage from Ephesians calls us to live as children of the light. And on the surface, that sounds not only desirable, but maybe even easy. But the question is for this morning, is it? After all, who would choose to live in darkness instead of light? And upon reflection, Though the deeper self-reflection, we recognize how it is all too easy, all too easy to live in the darkness of prejudice, pettiness, self-righteousness, and fear. If we think about our world today and COVID-19, it's pretty easy to stay in the darkness. You don't hear much hope on the media. The news is full of stories of fear, bigotry, racism, and hatred. And behind each of these stories are people who are choosing to live in the darkness rather than live in the light. Living in the light of God's love is a continuing call to change, to grow, and to repent we have chosen to live in darkness. Most churches, including our Episcopal Church, include a prayer of confession of sin in our Sunday services. Darkness is not just out there in other people. Each of us has the capacity, you and I, to choose thoughts, words, and deeds that reflects sin and darkness. Just as we can choose those which spread light and love. In last Sunday's reflection, 
of these same meditations. Manakuri described stories in the Bible of people's faces shining when they chose to live in the presence and power of God's light. It is a good reminder for us today that we manifest and radiate out to others the energy in which we choose to live. So what are the things we are asked today with this meditation is what is our response to the scripture quote from Ephesians? What is Paul asking us to do today? And why do you think people might choose to remain in the darkness rather than live in the light? Maybe it's easier. And have you struggled? And do you struggle with that decision yourself? I think it's especially true today and something we really need to think about. I want to do one other thing this morning, and that is I've written a meditation uh, about the coronavirus, and I really wrote it for our Wednesday class, uh, and all those people on that mailing list, which now represents about 118 good folks. Allison asked me to send it to Kristen so it could be put on the website so you might find it there. But anyway, why don't you uh, listen to this, close your eyes, and see if this resonates with you. We're still hoping that we'll wake up. We're still hoping we'll peek from under the covers and think, thank God. It was just a dream. Just yesterday, moms were packing school lunches. Children were going off to school. Restaurants were open. Sports arenas were busy. Brides were walking down the aisle. We were sharing meals with neighbors. And we had jobs. In the blink of an eye, everything changed. An invisible disease invaded our lives, our plans, our futures, and our security. In a heartbeat, the world changed. Grandma and Grandpa aren't allowed visitors in their nursing homes and retirement communities. Churches, synagogues, and mosques have closed or gone silent. We are telecommuting, Zooming, Skyping, and living on social media in our pajamas and slippers. Handshakes and hugs have been put on hold and the shelves are empty. We are anxious, Father, and so we come to you. We don't ask for help. We ask you for hope and an outreach hand to guide our way. Take our hands and guide us, O oh Lord. Guide us. We ask because we know what you can do. We know the great stories of the Bible and the stories of your inspiration and hope. And now we pray, give us that inspiration. Hear our prayer, Lord. Hear our prayer. Remember the Hebrew people of Egypt. You protected their children from the angel of death. We have children too. Protect them. Watch over them. We remember Joseph. You rescued him from the pit so he could save a nation. We pray you do the same for us so we can heal the nation and the world. And Sarah, remember her prayer. You heard them and gave her a child. Give us the hope of children so that we may be born anew. Joshua, remember his fears. You inspired him. Inspire us to have courage in this time of fear and pain, so pain will be no more. 
the woman at the tomb, you resurrected their hope and gave them the courage to carry on. Resurrect our hope, dear Lord, and give us the courage to carry on. You took away the doubts of Thomas. Take away our doubt. Help us calm our fears and never doubt your love for us. You changed Daniel from a captive into a king's counselor. Give us servants who can be inspired leaders and good counselors for us. Hear our prayer, Lord. Hear our prayer. You inspired and gave Esther the courage to save her people. Save us, Lord. Save us. Give us counselors like the great prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel. We need to hear your prophetic voice as you open our ears to what you have to say. Open our ears, Lord. Open our ears. We need leaders with courage, empathy, and wisdom that can encourage us and give us hope. Send them to us, Lord. Send them to us. What we feel today, you felt on that Friday long ago. Inspiration interrupted, goodness forsaking, mothers weeping, just as the darkness fell on your son, we feel the darkness falling on us, our friends, our family, the nation, and the world. After your son's three days in a dark tomb, you rolled back the stone, rumbled the earth and turned the darkest day into the brightest Sunday. Grant us another Easter, Lord. Grant us another Easter. We thank you, Father, for the selfless acts of service by so many, the doctors, the nurses who help people they don't even know, working together at personal risk to care for the rest of us. We are humbled by their commitment, commitment to us. We pray, dear Father, that you help us to respect each other, care for each other, and look up to you in prayer because we are anxious and worried, but we have hope because of you, and know you will get us through this in this time. We ask, Father, that your mercy be upon all who suffer, Grant to those who lead us wisdom beyond their years and experience. Help us to put our differences aside. Have mercy upon the souls who have been hurt and have died because of this disease. Give us grace to help each other and the faith to follow and trust you. And look with favor upon your church. Give her the wisdom to lead the world anew. Give her the tools to heal this hurting world and comfort us, comfort us in this time of need. Hear our prayer, Lord. Hear our prayer. Amen. Well, thank you, Deacon Bill, uh, for that. And uh, oh, what resonant words uh, for what we're going through as a community right now and a world. So thank you for that uh, meditation. So we continue to move through our service of morning prayer. Feel free to uh, lift up anybody you'd like in prayer today by just typing their names in Facebook and I'll read them uh, in about three minutes when we get to our prayer time. Let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. We now move into our time of uh, live petitions. So again, feel free to type anyone you want to raise up in prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Today we pray especially for Susan, George, Bob, Charlene, Bobby Jean, Jackie, Daniel, Paul, Georgia, Jeanette, Marie, Evan, Rochelle, Nikki, Mary Carmen, Kate, Bill, Bev, Louisa, Christoph, Daniel, for Ruth and Barbara, for Tova, and for those we now name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We pray especially for Morgan and for those we now name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. 
Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. As we move uh, into our day, I hope you are showered with God's blessings um, through your daily tasks. And uh, just reminder that uh, this little thing below me, um, again, St. Bart's continues to operate even though our campus is closed. And we're so grateful for any support you can offer during this time um, to, to keep your pledges going and for any support you can give to our uh, crisis um, pastoral care fund that we're um, we're continuing to, to support our community with. Uh, tomorrow we'll be back at 10 a.m., so I hope you'll be there to join us. Um, I might be on the piano tomorrow, so that might be exciting. And we have a special guest who's going to be with us uh, live and in person, so look forward to that. This person is, you'll recognize them, um, but they're very excited to do this, so I'm looking forward to having them join us. Um, and again, I hope uh, you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining us. And um, may God protect us and guide us as we move into our day. Peace be with you. Goodbye.